so I think a well-balanced human needs to admit uh, both positives and negatives of things that they hold true to themselves. And uh, anyone who's listened to the pod for a while has probably figured out, I love it when people do something when they've been kind of plateaued, right, or stagnated. Um, I think that it's always best just to try to solve a problem, try to go in a different direction instead of staying put when you know what the outcome is. Um, but I do have to admit that the Timberwolves are probably the worst case scenario, worst timeline uh, for this behavior. And uh, I guess this is a consequence of every time I open my mouth and say, I'm glad that they're going to do something and I'm glad that they're giving something a go. Um, this does sit as a reference against my theory because the Timberwolves, uh, according to a Basketball Forever post that I had stumbled across that I screenshotted for this occasion, um, there are a lot of a lot of problems going on. So, you know, Carl Anthony Towns is mysteriously injured. You know, what went down with a calf strain now uh, in November has yet to return. And that seems interesting. Uh, you've got the Rudy Gobert situation, which really, you know, they, they did this to plug a defensive hole and it hasn't really changed the needle too much and the offensive liabilities and, and the contract in general, it's not great. Anthony Edwards getting injured is not good and really was the bright spot for the season. Then you've got Walker Kessler, traded for Rudy Gobert, who has turned out to be Rudy Gobert on a rookie contract um, with more offensive prowess and has been featured in a lot of the Utah Jazz's success this year, including blocking Grant Williams' layup attempt against Boston. Uh, Jared Vanderbilt, obviously, you know, being an asset in a Lakers trade and being really good. D'Angelo Russell just suddenly disappearing despite having a really good career year to get in a veteran. Um, and Keel Alexander-Walker, who maybe aren't panning out. And um, they're really committed to this team with contracts. And they might be sitting in the playoff picture at the moment for the West, but I think we can all acknowledge that out of the bottom four contenders, uh, they have the least potential to actually do anything beyond the first round. And yeah, I think it's just, it's a cautionary tale that when I like someone doing something for the sake of change, uh, this is actually probably the worst outcome that could occur for a place that does so. I, I feel like, um, firstly, um, at the moment, they're not actually in the playoffs. They're in their playing spot at ninth. And there's a potential that they actually slide all the way out. Um, you know, it wouldn't be shock horror that the T-Wolves do not play in the play-in this year, let alone the playoffs. And um, I guess it's probably disappointing because we were both fairly high on this team or higher than where they were. We never said they were going to win a championship. We probably picked them in top six, I think, to finish in the West. Uh, but obviously Cat missing literally three thirds of the, you know, three quarters, sorry, three quarters of the season uh, obviously is uh, has been a huge um, setback there from a talent perspective. Trading away DeAndre Russell was questionable at best, but, you know, maybe he wasn't the right fit. I think he was getting a little bit unhappy as well at the T-Wolves. So, you know, fair enough, move him on. And, you know, we touched upon this probably around December that, you know, the whole trade was a failure. You know, this whole Gobert trade was a failure in December. That was even before Walker Kessler broke out and has sort of really solidified himself as a, you know, as a key player, you know, a key starter for the Jazz and uh, hopefully has a long career, you know. Um, look, at the end of the day, T-Wolves, uh, I don't know, we talked about Magic earlier, we talked about Charlotte Hornets earlier. T-Wolves are the equivalent in the West, really. You know, they're, they're sort of been there, um, you know, in that sort of, you know, can we make playoffs in that fringe spot? They've sucked for a long time. They were good when KG was there. And, um, you know, it's been a long time since KG has left. I don't know. I don't know what more there is to say about that. these guys. They, you know, they make some moves. They, they, they try. <laughs> and... Um, you know, I think, uh, you know, that's that's about as much credit as you can give them. I think if, if I had to come full circle and give some optimism to any Timberwolves fans, um, I think over the last couple of seasons, seeing the players and the contracts and the type of trades that have been pulled off for people who are quote unquote untradeable, e.g. Westbrook about four times, um, I'm sure they can manage something. I'm sure something will come along at some point. Um and I think they'll take advantage of that as evident with, I guess, their willingness to make moves. This ownership group seems very aggressive. Uh, but yeah, look, it's it's bleak and it's definitely not what they envisioned when they signed up for all of this.
I think uh, you jogged my memory there a little bit too. I think um, I think in December, give or take, when we, when I, uh, I think I had the hot take about the whole trade was a, a total failure at that point, and it was only like two months into the season at that point. And um, I said, I think in that in that uh, podcast that Cat would be traded in the next few seasons. Hmm. And I think effectively, uh, I don't think anything's really changed for me to perhaps suggest otherwise. Uh, you know, there are a 500 team without him. There are probably a 500 team with him. They're around a 500 team with him and Rudy Gobert. <laughs> that's that's the greater reality. Um, and I think that's the, you know, you talk about cautionary tales and we talked about uh, Paolo Banchero a little bit before, you know, and obviously, you know, I wasn't very high on him and you were much higher on him. And Cat is a, is a talent. Cat is a, a potential all NBA talent here. Um, his stats are, you know, when he's healthy, uh, sort of top 10, top 10 stats wise, you know, for his contributions uh, offensively, defensively, he can, you know, block shots and he can make, shoot the three ball at a fairly good clip, that sort of stuff. Okay. But none of that necessarily means translates into winning. That's the key. None of that necessarily translates well, into winning. Okay. And I think that's, that's where, what we saw last year. Yeah. And I think that's the part where Cat and other players similar to Cat, where, you know, they, they put up, you know, stats, they, they sort of make, uh, you know, they, they fill up box scores. But, you know, it takes a lot more to translate into winning than, than what the T Wolves uh, have at the moment, including Cat. Hmm. Well, there's a difference when you walk into a game and it's just another day for both teams involved. And then you walk into a game that's one of seven and is actually important and people are trying. And we saw that last year with the Memphis Grizzlies, which, you know, that series was a lot closer than I think people realized. And Timberwolves actually blew leads in that. So theoretically, they they probably should have won. And Cat's performance in a couple of those games was very much the reason for them not being able to perform. And, and the sample size is large enough. You're totally right. We we know what Cat's going to do. And another team probably knows that. And, you know, that may or may not help his trade value. Who knows? But, yeah, you, I, I agree with you. You know, we saw D'Angelo move. And I think I predicted that trade in that discussion as well. And um, I think you might be predicting something that could occur as soon as this offseason. But it also depends on whatever this mystery injury is. Because he had a calf injury and he's not back yet. And... You wonder if it's this weird, like to me, I get conspiracy theory of like Achilles. Is it an Achilles issue now? Because it's been four months and there's no timeline to return. And if, if only they could publicly release their medical records. If they just publicly <laughs> release the records, this wouldn't be an issue. Wouldn't be an issue. Yo, this is two guys with spare time. I'm Faz. This is Nick. You're probably a basketball fan like us. So hopefully you can throw us an assist in giving our viewer a like and uh, subscribing to our channel. And if you've got thoughts, feelings, or even some suggestions, please put them down in the comments section below. And thank you for using your spare time to watch us in our spare time.